Oracle Apex is a developer tool that enables us to create working applications on a database in Oracle and to do that very quickly. So in this video series for rapid application development, we will be using Apex 424. If you want to work along with the videos, there are scripts available that will be run in the first few videos that create tables and populate the tables with data. I'm logged in as developer Ben and the reason I'm logged in as Ben is because he has on his to-do list the definition of user interface or UI defaults. Let's take a look at why we need to do this to set those defaults. If we go to the application builder and we run our application and we look at projects what we see are the actual field names for the column headings and if we click on the edit and come into the form we're seeing again the field names so those are not necessarily user friendly what we want to do is come out of the application and go back to SQL workshop and go into object browser and then we are going to look at the tables starting with projects and if you look at the definition of projects you'll see along the tabs here that we have a UI default setting so I'm going to click on that and I haven't defined your user interface defaults so I'm going to click on create defaults and create defaults again now notice actually if you look up here on the breadcrumb you'll see that although we were in object browser Apex has now directed us to the utilities area for user interface defaults and the table dictionary so we're working with the metadata for the tables and the columns within the tables so I'm going to uh, go ahead and click synchronize and then synchronize defaults now I see all the tables I'm going to open up projects you can edit the table settings but right now we're going to focus on the column names so I'm going to select project ID and I just need to add a space for the label so that we and put uh, ID in caps then I'm going to add help text I might put uh, this is system generated and is a unique ID for each row in the table. Now I can apply that change but what I can do to move through the columns more quickly is I can click this button and go to the next column so if I have several columns I can move through the columns making the edits and then I will apply the changes all at once. So I'm going to click next now I'm going to spell out the word project and you probably don't need help text for this but I'll go ahead and type in uh, this is the name of the project what you'll find is when you have the help text people will be able to click on that label and see the help text if it's not clear to them what they need to put in a particular field in the form so now I click the next column and this is the person or company for which the project is done and now I apply my changes so what I see here are the column names and over here I see the label and when we go back and recreate the report and form you'll see how that benefits us uh, what I'm going to do also though before I do that I will pause the video coming back to the table dictionary I'm going to step through and set the user interface defaults for all the columns in all the tables but I will pause the video while I do that I have gone through and set the UI defaults for all the columns in all the tables but I need to mention that when I set the labels I also modified the width of some of the uh, the page items that are tied to the fields in the table so you might want to scroll through those and adjust the width so it's a more appropriate width 
And now that we've done that, let's go back to our application, having set all the UI defaults, and I want to create, recreate actually the form and report on projects. So I picked form, I'm picking form with report, and it'll be a different page number, so the old pages are there, we'll get rid of them shortly. And again, I will do a, uh, the, change the default names. I set my breadcrumb and I set that to home. I reselect projects. In this case though, I do not want tabs because what I will do when I delete the first report and page for projects, I will edit the tab so that it opens the new report and page. So don't include tabs. And step through. and then I create that. And so when I run this, run this page, the difference is you now see the labels that were de defined in the user interface definitions. And if I click a particular record, again, when I go to the form, I'm seeing the name for the label. If I click on a particular label, or actually I guess not the label, but the question mark, I will get the help test help text that I typed in. So now that we have this new and improved report and form for projects, I'm going to go back to the application and I'm going to delete these two, the pages for the report and the original form. So I click on projects list and I will go over here to utilities and do a delete and permanently delete the page. I want to make sure to say don't delete the tab because I want to reuse the tab and that's the setting by default. So leaving that I click delete page. Now I can come back and look at my list of pages and I want to pick the first project form that would be the one with the lower number and I will delete it also. Now when I run my application and I click projects, I get an error message because those pages no longer exist. But this is a good example of how we can come back to our application and go to shared components because the tabs will appear in most pages in your application. So they are shared. So we have sections for logic, security, user interface, and navigation. The first thing I want to do is edit the tabs in navigation. So here I have projects and no longer have pages associated with it. So I click that and click the icon, the search icon, and now I pick the new improved projects list and modify the follow on page. So I apply those changes. I come back to the application. I should zoom in so it's a little bit bigger. Run the application. Now when I click projects, I'm going to see the new report based on the user interface defaults and the new form.